This podcast is produced by the Center for Deployment Psychology at the Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences. The views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Uniform Services University, the Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. In addition, references to any specific companies, products, processes, or services does not necessarily constitute or imply endorsement by the Uniform Services University, the Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. Welcome to CDP's podcast, Practical for Your Practice. Where we give you actionable intel to support what you do. One colleague to another. Welcome to Practical for Your Practice. I'm Andy Santanello, Senior Military Behavioral Health Psychologist at the Center for Deployment Psychology at the Uniformed Services University. And I'm really excited to have two other members of CDP here with me. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Dr. Jenna Ermold, Assistant Director of Training and Education. And I'm Dr. Kevin Holloway, Director of Training and Education here at CDP and Assistant Professor of Medical and Clinical Psychology at the Uniformed Services University. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here, guys. I'm excited that we're going to be doing this podcast together. So let's talk a little bit about, it's interesting because the name of the podcast is Practical for Your Practice, and this will be a completely impractical introduction. (laughs) I'm not going to get any practical advice today. Um, But we wanted wanted to set it up uh, and explain a little bit about what the podcast is going to be about. So you, the listener, will have an idea of why you might want to tune in. So what is this, you know, who's the show intended for? Why, why have we decided to do this? Um, maybe I can throw in first. So I, I think all of us are trainers at, at CDP. We all go out and do, or more recently stay in and do uh, training workshops for mental health providers in evidence-based psychotherapies. And, um, I, you know, it's, it's fantastic to be able to do that, but we all recognize that like that two day workshop format is a nice start. Um, but after the workshop comes all this extra stuff, like, you know, having to, to apply what has been learned to real life clients, not the textbook, perfect clients that, you know, are used as examples in the workshop. And so, um, there's, there, there's a need for some support and resources and things to, to help, I think, like do this in real life? How do you actually apply the things that have been learned or or how do I feel confident in doing these things? And what about um, in those situations where the the client isn't the textbook perfect case? What do I do there? So um, I think as we've talked about this show and what it could be, I think we all talked about what would have been helpful for us as we were getting into, uh, you know, starting to uh, offer evidence-based therapies, what are the resources that would have helped us? So I think part of it is just thinking about what, what are those practical tips, those practical helps that we can share from our experience with providers, mental health providers who are seeing, you know, service members and their family members, veterans, how do we apply those things that were learned in evidence-based psychotherapy workshops better in a, in a more real live real world situation. And I'll just sort of jump in there too, in terms of the, the who um, is, as you know, as Kevin mentioned, we all train people who are really invested in providing high quality care to the population that we all are pretty passionate about. And we want them to feel connected to us. Um, so, you know, after we train them, we want to maintain that connection you know, help them feel connected to our learning community, to maybe even each other. And so this is just another way to keep that community going, um, you know, help folks not feel so alone uh, if they're if they're feeling a little isolated in what they do and offer another resource. So any provider, whether you're new to an EBP or even in somebody who's been practicing for a really long time, I think things are always coming up. Research is always, I mean, I think we've seen huge changes in the past year of how we're implementing EBPs um, mm-hmm. via telehealth, but via telehealth in the midst of COVID. So there's just it, the landscape always changes. So I think any provider who wants to feel connected, wants to continue to think about ways to improve their practice um, should tune in. I totally agree. And I guess the thing I think about when, you know, I'm thinking about that question, who is the show intended for our colleagues? And, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that we all talked about as we were kind of thinking about what this podcast would be like is all the conversations that we tend to have, you know, just at CDP among the different trainers uh, around those issues of implementation and when things don't go perfectly and sort of the kind of conversations you might have with just another peer when you step into their office and do like peer consultation. Um, And so that's kind of the tone we want to set for this podcast is, you know, a conversation with 
you are colleagues in a sort of informal way where we're throwing around some ideas about practically how can we adapt the science to fit with your daily practice. And I think along with that, you know, like all of us, all, all of us that are trainers at CDP that we've either have been clinicians or we have been, and we currently are clinicians. And, you know, so some of that can be, you know, we can share some of the experiences that we've had, but even questions that we have too. So, I mean, I would, I'd throw out there that, that even though I, I'm an instructor at CDP, I don't have all the answers all the time. It's nice to kind of bounce ideas off of what I know. <laughs> this is, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I would invite you back in to help me or we can help each other and, or, or talk it's about those practical. things that haven't, <laughs> that haven't always worked perfectly. Right. And, and what did we do about them or, or even get ideas about that? So like imperfectly practical. <laughs> it's starting to be a tongue twister. Right. Well, what are we going to talk about? I mean, we, we mentioned a little bit about who the audience is and maybe our sort of general ideas about why we're doing this. What sorts of things, you know, are we going to talk about in this podcast? And I think kind of going back to our experiences as trainers, there's always components of the protocol or, or um, case examples or things that we feel like we just didn't have enough time to really. Um, and I hate deeper dive, but, but to, to really kind of take a closer look, spend a little more time. And so there's all these sort of, um, nuggets, if you will, that we would wish we had time to cover in more depth. And I think this is a great opportunity to do that because I think a lot of what we teach, um, can, is complicated or again, sort of taking it from the classroom to the practice can feel complicated. And so we want to really, provide some examples and and a forum to discuss, you know, sort of these on the micro level, some of the things that we're talking about. So I think that's, that's one thing we get great questions in our consultation groups and um, they get us thinking. I think that's one of my favorite things that I do because it really is a, it's a wonderful way to kind of keep your brain thinking and and think about how to apply these, these different um, treatments, you know, across, across populations. But so I think, those couple of things would be things that we would talk about for sure. I think one of the things Jenna said earlier too, I'd, I'd echo is that, you know, there, the, the landscape is always changing and there's always real world things that are, they're happening and impact our practice. And so I think, so some topics we might cover in future episodes of the podcast might be, you know, things around social justice issues and how do they impact the work that we do? Um, our own biases and how that impact what we do, you know, things that are happening in the world, like major uh, events, uh, how does that impact how we work with folks or how do we competently and confidently offer these treatments? Like Jenna mentioned earlier, the whole COVID-19 thing. And and if somebody's listening to this way into the future, you know, this is launching amid the COVID-19 pandemic where, you know, we've got, vaccines that are on the horizon and and people are starting to get vaccinated, but that's been a huge impact to the way that psychotherapy has been delivered. And and so what are the practical implications of that? And what are some solutions and and how do we support each other in, in being able to uh, support our clients? Uh, You know, so I, I think about those kinds of topics that we, we may be covering, you know, so lots of things related to the finer points of implementing the evidence-based psychotherapies that folks might already have training in, as Jenna said, getting into like a deeper dive and then sort of the nitty gritty and also looking sort of macro level at some of the larger contextual, you know, modifiers, mediators, moderators, more M words that describe them. <laughs> you know, how do we, how do we take that, these really important things that are happening um, that are affecting all of us, um, you know, whether we're in the role of therapist or client, and finding some practical ways to bring that into the therapy room and address that along with the other things we need to be, you know, working on and addressing in EDPs. I think we um, should devote a whole show to alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very important skill. I, I, and I think a lot of our, you know, one of the things I respect so much about our consultees is they have this willingness to be vulnerable about what's not going well in their treatments. And I think that, you know, that's a, 
to me, an incredibly brave thing to do. And I think that's kind of the tone we want here is that that's okay. That's how we learn. Um, and I think bringing some of that content and examples from, as Kevin said, like our personal clinical experiences or things we've consulted on to, again, set the stage that, you know, we're not... A, Perfection is pretty tough um, and we're not expected to be there either. And so, again, have this community of like, how do we keep growing and getting better? And it's OK to be vulnerable and talk about when things don't go so well as you're implementing these treatments as well. Absolutely. And you're going to hear that a lot from us, us being vulnerable, us not saying things perfectly, us talking about things that didn't go 100 percent right. You know, we want this to be uh, organic and real. Um, as opposed to yeah, holding, you know, holding inauthentic and instead of holding up this, uh, you know, the standard that maybe is impossible for anybody to reach all the time. So how often are we going to be publishing? How often are we going to be uh, making episodes available? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think our intention is to start like twice monthly but we're going to feel it out and, you know, like be flexible and see how it goes. So it might be, it might be that we have so much to say that it's going to be more frequent than that. Um, it, it may be depending on, you know, how, how widespread the, the listener group is. I don't know. It, I, I think we can cut out everything I just said and have Jenna say it more simply than <laughs> whatever we decided on. I think the intention is every other week. This is we're bi-weekly, uh, bi-monthly. We're, we never really know how to how to phrase that. Yeah. But uh, every other week is the initial intent, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think we we also want to be responsive to because a lot of this will be hopefully addressing some of the questions and issues that our listeners bring up, and so. You know, if, if there tends to be more things to talk about, we might do it uh, even more often than that. But we're going to start out probably every other week or so. And Andy, just kind of after you said that, it made me think I, one of the things we value listeners is what do you want to hear about? What do you want to talk about? Uh, what do you want us to, to try and address? So I think we'll uh, definitely have a, a way for you to contact us and as we produce this, put an email that you're able to send those questions and, and uh, topics too. But we are, we're hoping to make it interactive with, you know, our learning community for sure. Absolutely. So last but not least, you know, there are lots and lots of podcasts out there. I didn't do a last count, but I'm sure there's thousands. I think that's probably a, a safe bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, why should people listen to this podcast? I think. One of the main reasons that you should listen is that, you know, hopefully you feel connected to, to us. Uh, you know, like we were saying earlier, we hope that the three of us, um, you know, as we're talking about this stuff, feel like colleagues to you. The, 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 st the work you're doing, the places that you work, the experiences you're having, uh, hopefully maybe you're are reflected in the conversations we're having here too. And so whether that's because of questions that you've sent in or, or uh, because the things we're talking about feels um, familiar to you because of your experience. I hope that's a reason to stay. And so instead of us just kind of, you know, talking lofty, heady theory and, and con conceptual kind of things, instead we're talking about that day-to-day -day application, the, the stuff that matters and, and how do we deal with some of those uh, sideways situations that come at us. So hopefully that feels of value to you. Well, and I think getting back to the content is we want it to be relevant, applied for you to feel just in time, um, to, to kind of feel like we're, we're in your office, you know, cheering you on and, and helping you out and being there to listen um, and reflect back at least maybe some of the experiences that are common amongst those of us who work with military connected clients. And again, um, it can our field can can be very supportive and sometimes we can feel kind of isolated. So this is an attempt to really make you feel, as Kevin said, like we're your colleagues and we're talking about these issues and can be relatable. So, you know, I, I hope you listen uh, so that you, you really feel a part of this CDP family, really. I imagine us all in your car during your commute on the way into work. <laughs> You know, having a conversation. To nowhere? No, on to your work. To your, uh, to your kitchen, <laughs> right. from your bedroom. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to a day when uh, we're not all isolated in our houses, 
but uh, I hope that comes soon. We'll see. So, you know, what we hope is in addition to feeling like you're a little bit more connected with CDP, um, that we can offer you some really good actionable intel that you can take from our podcast and apply right away. Uh, and, and I think maybe that will be one thing that hopefully will feel a little bit unique about this podcast as maybe compared to others. Um, is that at the end of every podcast, we're going to end it with you know, a really brief suggestion on how you can sort of take the information we've talked about and apply it right away. So the name of the podcast is Practical for Your Practice and your actionable intel for the day is to tune in to episode one, which will be coming soon. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thanks for listening to Practical for Your Practice. Please feel free to subscribe, rate, and join in on the conversation in the comments. Until next time.